Chapter 41 to 42. Put your legs down or Hina will throw you in jail, Hina said as she lightly sat down on her chair. With a soft smile on his face, Amon did as she demanded while still eating ice cream using a spoon. Meh, throw me in jail? Bitch, you are lucky I'm not controlling the world yet. You'd have already been under many now. Though of course, he didn't say it out loud and maintained a soft smile. You are too professional and serious, Hinachan. Amon smiled sweetly. But that is what Amon loves about you, he said and leaned back. Hina frowned hearing him, especially how he referred to himself. Is he mocking Hina? She asked herself, however, she didn't try to retort. Soon, Hina lit a cigarette. I saw the large bag outside. So you hunted the Sakaki pirates this time, she said as she picked up a bounty poster of Captain Saki, who was killed a while ago by Amon. Sigh. She released an involuntary sigh as she looked at Amon's face. Just look at him. Look how he's eating ice cream. He doesn't seem like a person who just ruthlessly killed 80 people an hour ago. Sigh, this is the truth of this world, huh? Hina soon shook her head and pulled herself back. This was none of her business, in the end. She was just an average Marine. As Amon sensed her emotions, he chuckled making Hina confused. He remembered the day of his first kill. It was back when he was only six years old and had gone to the upper yard for the first time. In excitement and nervousness, he was spotted by a militia. Without any choice, he had to kill him, which he did very silently and ruthlessly. Though after doing so, he vomited for hours and was unable to eat for a day or two. Yet, at this point, killing doesn't affect him at all. Humans are adaptive creatures after all. It has been a long time since the guy who reincarnated in a fictional world has grown up. Hina is sorry. Hina's calm tone brought him back to reality. You have to wait for around an hour, as the bounty is big this time, and we also have to check the proofs. She said as Amon waved his hands. No problem. This is my favorite part of coming to this marine base. Spending time with my cute Hinachan. Amon said as he leaned his chin on his hands, though his internal thoughts were quite different. Fucking boring. At least she shows some reactions now and then. A few minutes passed, as Amon was eating his third box of ice cream. He opened his mouth with food inside. Highway Hinachan, you shouldn't act so cold with me. Gulp. Finish your food. Hina said lightly, as she had her eyes closed, and was leaning on the back of her chair with a cigarette in her mouth. MMM. Amon licked his lips. After all, we both started our journey six months ago, though the job is different. Yet this proves how we were born to be with each other, Amon said. Like the first day when I came after hunting some pirates, you were the newly chosen captain who just finished her training. It's as if God has prepared this even before the universe was created. Or maybe, the universe was only created for both of us. Amon leaned forward. Let's get married. Hina wanted to get up and punch him in the face, but she just sighed. She didn't mind getting confessed, as it was quite typical to her. This is the reason why her anime counterpart never punished the mobs who confessed and disturbed her. Without getting the reaction he was hoping for, Amon clicked his tongue internally and came up with a new idea. Oh, also I was thinking, maybe I should be a pirate, he said and leaned back on the chair with the ice cream down. I mean, since I'm getting this much just from bounty hunting, then being a pirate. Before he could finish his line, Hina got up abruptly and pulled him by his collars. If you ever become a pirate, I will be the first to hunt you down, Hina said with a visible glare in her eyes. Amon didn't react. Instead, he slowly slipped his finger around his lips as it whipped a bit of the ice cream. Well, his playful voice was now gone, and a serious one took over. If you say it like that, I might do it just to get caught by you. I don't mind being chased by you for my whole life, until the day I die," Amon said in a strange voice, as he wiped his finger around Hina's lips as a barely visible blush made her cheeks rosy. She soon let him go, as Amon was laughing heavily in his mind. Hina hates you, Hina whispered though she assumed Amon didn't hear. If I had enough proof that you are the one who killed those bounty hunters four months ago, I would have already put you in jail. Amon just smiled softly at her. Asterisk. Soon after, Amon received his 469 million bellies and returned to his temporary base, the Whiskey Peak. Hey look, Leader Lucifer is back. The bounty hunters around exclaimed as some of them bowed. After last time's incident, the few survivors started to follow Amon as their leader out of pure fear and now respect. Currently, they knew better to go after a 25 million head to care about their life. Also, they were getting more moments than before anyway. Amon ignored them and walked towards the biggest building in the middle of the city, the mayor's hall. Is this a coincidence that I'm a mayor in both this place and Skypea? He thought while looking at the building. Soon, he entered it and found Cricket about to go outside. Oh, Crimson, you are already back? Cricket asked as he patted his shoulder. Yes, the Marine Captain was fast as always, Amon said as he raised the bag with money. He asked Cricket to call him Crimson from now on, even if nobody's around. Just having a double name can help a lot in things, since nobody really knows his real name other than Cricket here. Oh, by the way, just call me Lucifer from now on. 
Amon said as Cricket laughed. Haha, a new title? Cricket laughed lightly. Anyway, I will go check on the newbies, all right? I will come back in an hour to give the information on what happened today. Amon just nodded as Cricket left. Amon is creating an organization similar to Baroque Works, though it will be known as a bounty hunting organization for now. Cricket is the one who manages most things, though Amon seizes an explanation on each and every one of his moves, but he does the main things himself. There is also no way of Cricket lying with Amon's observation hockey. Still, there is a reason why he is trusting Cricket so much though. The first reason being, Cricket is a guy who is searching for a new adventure, and now that he found it with Amon, he won't just betray Amon without any world-breaking reason. Yes, that's because this is One Piece. One Piece, the world where a guy who met another guy a day ago won't think twice to die for him. Here, humans are dumber, or if one had to call it respectively, they are more emotional, too emotional actually. Luckily, one of Amon's main points is his knowledge of how to use a person's emotions for himself. Then, the second and most important reason is their ancestral connection. That's pretty much pure bullshit in Amon's previous world, however, again, in this world, it is completely normal. Amon is using his meta-knowledge at its best. Not only the things that will happen in the canon, even the people's characteristics will be used. Soon, he entered the building and went to a hidden room with the size of four-tenths of a football field. This is a room which was used for many things by the previous mayor, the skinny guy with a deep voice. Though Amon modified it using dials, so that only he could enter the room safely after doing some tests. Proving how Amon's knowledge of dial was increasing even in this blue sea. Amon then went to a corner of the room, where three treasure chests were kept. They look exactly the same, however, two of them were traps with normal fruits inside of them. If someone gets greedy and touches the wrong chest, they will immediately get electrified and attacked by various kinds of dials hidden around the room. However, even if the person touches the real chest, they would still get electrified, albeit no other attacks would be made. Yet, thinking they chose the wrong chest, they will touch the other one, and then will get attacked for sure. This doesn't affect Amon, as he's been training his body for years now to go against a possible thunder god. Even with observation hockey, one won't be able to tell apart the chest and recognize which is the right one. Only people with a very high level of observation hockey, who can sense a little bit of the future, not necessarily like Katakuri, would be able to discern. But in that case, it will still send an alarm to Amon's dial as the chest's keyhole is messed up and its only key is his wings. Amon didn't want to be on the loose end ever again. That's the reason why he's taking this type of precautions, though he would add more security to it today, as this was his devil fruit stash. Soon, he put the two devil fruit that he got from the pirates in the stash, making a total of four fruits. He did hunt many pirates with devil fruits, but since they were useless, he sold them for belly to the marines. Hair hair fruit, needle needle fruit, which was there from before, and the new two, steam steam fruit, and blanket blanket fruit. Asterisk. A few days later. Bam. Bam. In the sea, Amon was deep underwater, fighting against sea kings. His wings were covered in plastic paper, and also he applied a gel, which reflects water to a 100% extent. Asterisk goor. Asterisk. A sea king dashed towards him as he prepared a punch. Under the water, his fist shined slightly as he punched towards the sea king. Bam. It hit the sea king in the head as it was thrown far back. Yet, it returned after not so long. Their fight escalated, with Amon coming out the winner. Asterisk. Days later, Amon was in the same secret room, albeit this time, the room was filled with four types of specific fruits. This time, he also wasn't alone, as he had a small octopus with him, locked in a glass container. There was also a man tied by many straps, ropes, sharp strings, and electric wires a bit behind him. He was struggling to get out, however, only hurt his body by doing so. His skin was getting cut by the strings, and was getting shocked constantly because of his struggle. He was kept inside a glass coffin even though he was alive. Amon glanced at the man while he lost consciousness and went to sleep. Then he put the container on the table and walked to the three chests. He took out the needle needle and blanket blanket fruit and walked back to the octopus. The octopus, who was clinging to the glass as Amon knocked on it and fell down. Currently, Amon didn't have any particular emotions other than boredom on his face. Currently, he is checking the famous theory of Blackbeard eating two devil fruits. The theory of him having more than one heart. The theory that a devil fruit occupies the heart of the consumer. There are many flaws in it. Since if so, then how did the non-living creatures who ate the Zoan devil fruits did it? Amon thought as he played with the octopus from outside. Those mechanisms don't have a heart. He said as he saw to octopus trying to reach him from inside the glass. Well, I don't know. That's why I'm here with you, little October. Amon said to the octopus, while he started to cut the orange devil fruit of blanket into pieces. An octopus has multiple hearts, after all. Amon cut the orange-looking devil fruit into pieces 
and averted his attention from the octopus. He glanced at the unconscious man behind him as he walked towards him. It was a man of average stature, who was naked with only a white curtain covering his lower half. Before experimenting on the octopus, Amon needs to be sure of something. Maybe I should have gotten a woman. I prefer a naked woman rather than a grown-up man. Amon shook his head. But oh well, my fragile heart won't be able to take the impact of killing a woman. Amon snickered at his own words, and then he walked towards a strange-looking computer with many colorful buttons on the keyboard. Time to wake him up. Standing before the computer, Amon pressed the red button. Beep. ZZTDK. An electrical discharge went through the unconscious man as his body jerked up. A triple A R G G H. Ignoring the pleading of the man, Amon then placed 24 vision dial, motion capture, dial all around the room, making a circle around the coffin. Then he walked slowly and stood beside the glass coffin. It was kept above a table and was high enough for Amon to rest his chin on the glass. Currently, the man who regained his consciousness was inside the coffin and was looking at Amon with terrified eyes. F free me. Pliamum. Before he could finish his words, Amon shoved a round mouth-sized pipe in his mouth through the small hole above the glass coffin. The pipe then reached his throat and windpipe. M. He was crying tears, but Amon didn't show any reactions. Rather, he just took the piece of orange devil fruit and dropped it through the pipe. M. 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 Amon rested his chin in the coffin while looking at the man whose face turned blue from the terrible taste of the devil fruit. Waiting for the day I eat one. Soon, he noticed that the leg of the man was turning into a blanket. The orange devil fruit was the blanket blanket fruit, which lets the user turn into a blanket. Amon was testing the theory that devil fruit occupies the eater's heart. Previously, he had researched the hearts of devil fruit users, however. The hearts were no different than normal humans' heart. Amon believes it's because of the devil fruit reincarnation. Just as the person dies, the devil fruit leaves the body and the body returns to normal. Unless he gets a heart cut by Op Op No Me, or at least the heart of Buggy the Clown, he won't be able to test the hearts of living subjects, at least not with this level of equipment. For that reason, he needs to use the rough way of testing, which he is doing now. He will make someone eat two devil fruits, and according to his previous tests, the body will explode in a second. In this time's test, Amon has already placed motion capture cameras to capture the clip of the explosion. After the clip was there, he would slow it down until he could see the starting point of the body's explosion. If it's around the heart, then he will at least get some headsets. Amon didn't waste any time, and dropped another piece of fruit through the pipe. Albeit this time it's an apple-looking devil fruit, the needle-needle fruit. Slide. As the piece was sliding through the pipe, Amon quickly ran to a corner, behind a shelf. A -a 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 -a. It her, triple A. Boom. Soon, an explosion occurred, the explosion of a living human body. Amon peeked from the shelf. The glass coffin was intact, however. The man inside it was not. In fact, there was no man inside of it. No head, no limbs, no eyes and ears, in fact, not even bones. Only blood, and even more blood. The coffin was a blood pool now. So gross. I hate this. Amon sighed. But I have to do what I have to. Amon then went to the bathroom to puke his disgust away. He came back to the room again, after doing tens of tests, obviously. A few minutes passed, and Amon was sitting in the computer chair with some motion dials connected to it. He still had the blood pool coffin behind him. Currently, he didn't have any particular reactions in his face, other than pure disgust. You, this is the third time, yet I can't get over it. Fuck. Amon had a mask on his face as he said this. He covered his mouth to not puke. He turned on the room freshener as the disgusting scent soon was overcome with the beautiful scent of lemon. Soon, he changed his mask with one filled with air freshener scent and started to work on the computer. Tap, 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 tap. He typed fast as the screen showed the video he captured with the motion dials. A, 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 A. Boom. The video played at normal speed, as it showed how the body got dissolved in a second. He then started to decrease the speed to its utmost limit. A tilde A tilde A. Boom. It was slow, very slow as it showed how his veins got pronounced and his body got destroyed. Yet this wasn't enough. He kept slowing the clip down, as sometimes it reached its limit. Amon created a new file and again did the same. Just like that, around 10 hours passed by. A A A A. The scream kept going on for minutes as finally the judgmental time came. This is the time when Amon will learn if the explosion really starts from the heart or not. It was still hard to see things at that speed, however. Amon's observation hockey did the trick. Asterisk BBBOM asterisk. The clip was slow, but Amon's world was slower. It's as if the time had completely stopped, and Amon was seeing things absolutely clear. He noticed the starting point of the body's explosion was its chest. However specifically, is it the rib cage? Is it the lungs? Or is it the heart? This time his observation hockey wasn't at fault. 
but rather, it was the technology that Amon had now, which wasn't enough to pin that out. For now, let's assume it's the heart. If so, then the octopus with three hearts should survive. Right. Amon asked himself while looking towards the small glass container on another table, which contained the scared octopus. Asterisk. Amon then ignored the bloody coffin and went towards the octopus instead. He could sense how scared the octopus was, though he didn't care. According to his calculations, even the three-hearted octopus will die too. But even if it survives, he will kill it himself to extract the devil fruits. Oh, suddenly, Amon looked at a table inside the room. The two devil fruit reincarnated already good. Looking at the orange-like devil fruit and apple-like devil fruit, Amon walked towards them and returned to the octopus. Looking at the octopus with his emotionless eyes, Amon shook his head. Soon, he cut another piece of the orange devil fruit and decided to drop it inside the container. He was careful to not give the apple as the first fruit, since it's the needle-needle fruit. Potentially, it's very dangerous. Even an octopus might kill him after eating that. He then slowly dropped the piece. Drop. The little octopus hurriedly took some steps back, as he felt danger from the incident just now. It wanted to escape from this container, however. It felt a glare on its back, as it looked up towards two red eyes looking at him with killing intent. Scared and without any choice, the octopus slowly crawled towards the piece of orange and started to eat it. It tasted sour, but it was only a small piece, so the octopus gulped it in one go. The October felt changes in his body, but didn't know what it was, though. Soon it noticed one of its tentacles change into a strange substance it never saw before. It controlled that tentacle, which was now in the form of a blanket, towards his mouth to get a bite, however, it didn't have any taste in it. Drop. The next moment, he found another fruit in front of him. Thinking it will also give him some kind of strange power that might help him run from the red-eyed human, he quickly crawled towards the piece of apple. Asterisk non non. Asterisk. The octopus felt strange. Very strange. He felt his body might explode, but it didn't. He didn't explode. Boom. Around 0.9 seconds later, the October also exploded. A few minutes later. Well, that was quite a surprise. It didn't explode instantly. It took 0.9 more seconds to explode than a human. Amon said looking at the clip. He sighed. So is this a failure? Will I have to be satisfied with a single devil fruit? Amon asked himself as he leaned back in his chair. For someone like Amon, he would never be satisfied with even the best Logia, Gorogoro, or even the arguably best Paramecia, Nomi. He would love to have both of them, and another one too. However, he laughed while covering his face. Actually, I won't really call it a failure. I will say my heart devil fruit theory is 101% accurate, even after this failure. This time, though it seemingly proved his theory as a fail, Amon was more than satisfied. He got up while stretching. I just need to go back to the Shandora Hall. Then I will test it. Blackbeard did it. Why can't I dot? Amon then started to take out chemicals that turned the blood pool dry, as dry as the desert. Devil fruits are overpowered, but two is always better than one. Or rather, three is always better than two. Yes, Amon has three devil fruits in his mind that he would eat. The Gorogoro Nomi is just one of them. 